This video is brought to you by The Great Courses Plus. Some musical themes are so iconic that it only takes hearing a few notes in order to conjure up a character, a location, or an entire story inside the mind of the listener. A chorus of trumpets recalls the adventurous world in Raiders of the Lost Ark. Thunderous brass instruments in an unforgiving percussive march signals Darth Vader in The Empire Strikes Back. And it only takes two ominous notes played on a double bass to characterize the shark in Jaws. These three musical themes are examples of what is called a leitmotif. Popularized by German composer Richard Wagner, a leitmotif is a recurring musical melody associated with a person, place, or thing. The concept was first introduced in operas as far back as the early 17th century, but has always been prevalent in the composition of film scores. And perhaps no composer has utilized leitmotifs better than John Williams. Williams composed the scores to Raiders of the Lost Ark, Star Wars, and Jaws, but in this essay, I want to discuss his score for the film Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, and examine how the music enhances the story. As the picture fades in, so too does the song The Arrival of Baby Harry. Childlike twinkles of a celeste over sustained groans of a double bass immediately capture the dichotomy of this story. Light and dark, good and evil, but it's also the unusual instrument selection by Williams that adds to the overall sense of awe and magic throughout Harry Potter. The Celeste looks like a standard piano, but where the piano gets its sound from hammers hitting strings, the Celeste gets its unusual sound from hammers hitting tiny metal bars. The delicate bell sound of the Celeste is rarely utilized in musical compositions, placing it more often in the special effects category of instruments. And because of that, hearing the instrument highlighted in Harry Potter immediately signals an abnormal score and an abnormal story. Williams utilizes other unusual instruments throughout the score, like the contrabassoon, an instrument capable of reaching pitch levels lower than the human ear can detect. The contrabassoon is comically juxtaposed with a soothing harp in an unlikely duet called Fluffy's Harp. In order to represent the giant sleeping three-headed dog and the magical harp in the story. Williams also takes ordinary instruments, but uses them in extraordinary ways. The magical ability of flight is on display time and time again throughout Sorcerer's Stone, and Williams is able to help reinforce these moments with the score. He has instruments play variations of glissandos, trills, and up-tempo runs of 30-second notes under the main melody, an apparent nod to the famous song Flight of the Bumblebee. This happens when the owls deliver mail in the Great Hall, when Neville takes flight on his broom, when Hermione levitates her feather in charms class, and when Harry retrieves the flying key. The Celeste and the auditory sensation of flying combine beautifully in the melody Hedwig's theme, by far the film's most iconic leitmotif. Williams quickly establishes this unique musical melody as the main theme for the Harry Potter series by repeating it time and time again throughout the film. Different variations of Hedwig's theme appear ten times in just the first 18 minutes of Sorcerer's Stone. This constant bombardment of music from Williams is indicative of the entire film. Of the film's 152-minute runtime, Williams composed over 73 minutes of original music. Music seems to accompany almost every moment, and sometimes every movement, in a type of orchestral precision that's referred to as Mickey Mousing. Mickey Mousing is a term derived from the animation technique where music punctuates the physical action on screen. Nicholas Flamel, where are you? 
In stark contrast, music is largely absent from what could be considered the ordinary. King's Cross Station, the zoo, and the Dursleys. When music does appear, it's because of magic. The extraordinary interjected into the ordinary. We see this when Harry speaks to the snake. Can you hear me? When Harry finds platform nine and three quarters. And when the owls first bring their letters from Hogwarts. In this sense, the owls themselves are harbingers of magic and hope into Harry's once bleak world. When the first owl flies in with Harry's letter to Hogwarts, it's to the melody of Hedwig's theme. This leitmotif doesn't signify just a single character or location, but instead signifies all the encompassing beauty and magic found within Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. It's the first melody we hear over the opening credits, and the last as the film fades to black. This video is brought to you by The Great Courses Plus. The Great Courses Plus is a subscription-based learning service with a giant library of over 10,000 video lectures. These in-depth lectures are taught by top professors from Ivy League and other renowned universities to experts working in their respective fields from places like National Geographic and the Smithsonian. The Great Courses Plus is partnered with me in order to give my viewers the fantastic offer of a free trial. All you have to do is visit thegreatcoursesplus.com slash theelk in order to start your free trial. And once you do, you can start taking all the classes you want immediately. I'll put a link in the description below that'll take you to their site. I recently took the course How to View and Appreciate Great Movies by Eric Williams. The course dissects great films scene by scene and sometimes even line by line in the screenplay in order to figure out what works, what doesn't work, and more importantly, why. Specifically, his lecture on music and film and how it enhances the larger story really helped me in my research as I shaped this essay. If you want to write, direct, or dissect films, I can't recommend it enough. Again, go to thegreatcoursesplus.com slash theelk right now so you can start your free trial. Not only is it a great way to help improve your skills and to broaden your knowledge, but it's a great way to help support Entertain the Elk and to help me make more videos for you. So thank you so much to The Great Courses Plus for sponsoring this video, and thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like it, share it with a friend who loves Harry Potter, and leave me a comment below. Rank the eight Harry Potter films from best to worst, and if you want, you can include the two Fantastic Beasts films if you've seen them. I'll leave my list in the comments below so you can all check it out and let me know what you think. Thanks again everyone for watching, and I'll see you all next time.